السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praises due to Allah And may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah And we bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Is indeed his final messenger the best of speech in the book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who listen to the best of speech, the book of Allah, and follow its commands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who come to know the best of ways, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and make us amongst his followers. Ya Habab Rasulillahi sallallahu rabbi wa sallamuhu alayhi yudhakkiruna al-Qur'anu بحقوق أبنائنا علينا في مواضع كثيرة من تعليم ومن رعاية ومن قوة أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا Throughout the Quran we are reminded as adults and as parents of our obligation towards our children Being the Quran would um, encourage us to encourage our children to be educated 
when the Prophet ﷺ would do the same, that we have a job towards our families, and sometimes the Quran would say, pay attention to not only their well-being in this world, but also pay attention to their well-being in the hereafter. Or ye who believe, protect yourselves and guard your families against the consequences of the hereafter be in the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from the hellfire. <laughs> and just trying to keep this as relevant as possible as we attempt to do here in our masjid. As you know that inshallah most of our youngsters will be starting school next year. And as somebody has said it, you know, we as parents as and our children we're just really never fully satisfied. When school starts, we as parents start complaining about having to drop off the kids and pick them up on the homework and what have you, and we pray for summertime. And when the summertime comes, within a week we are praying for the school to happen and open back again. <laughs> so much so that, you know, that uh, very um, common song that people sing around Christmas time, it's the most wonderful time of the year say that many parents think this song around August time. It's the most wonderful time of the year because the kids are going back to school. And this is indeed an exciting time and it is a challenging time, both for us parents as well as our children. And subhanAllah, the idea that our children are going to school and we are able to afford to send them to school and there are good schools around us, brothers and sisters, is good. But unfortunately, that also comes with a challenge. And inshallah, what we're going to do in the few minutes that we have, just express some of these challenges, both to us as parents, but also mainly to our, to our children as well. In the hopes that, insha'Allah, collectively, at least we become aware of what these challenges are, so that we are actually able to, to face them and address them in proper ways. They say that children, and we're, when we're talking about children, we're talking about school-aged children. They say that mainly there are five challenges that our children are going to have. And just for the sake of it, insha'Allah, we're going to limit it mostly to upper middle school and high school. Say that there are five main challenges that our children are going to have. And they all start with the letter S. And that's just one way of making it, you know, easier. Talking about these um, four S's revolve around self-esteem, social pressure, sex, substance abuse, and stress. These are the most common challenges that our children are going to have the minute they start school. And even though I'm talking to the parents, but I also understand that to, today is the last Jum'ah that our children are going to be um, with us. So as I'm talking to you, I'm also talking, inshallah, to you as well, my young brothers and sisters there. High school and school, subhanAllah, is a wonderful time. This is the place where people make friends. This is the place where we explore. This is where the place our natural abilities come out. This is the place where we really get to know ourselves and we formulate these social relationships. And subhanAllah, it can be a wonderful time. And a good number of us remember our um, childhood friends, you know, the friends that we went to school with and the teachers that we had and the challenges that we faced and whether school was good or not good for us. But inshallah, this is really what we are going to be focusing on. The concept of self-esteem. It becomes more challenging, this idea of self-esteem. Basically, by self-esteem, we mean how do we view ourselves, and as a result, how do we treat ourselves. So people who have, generally, a positive impression of who they are, tend to behave in a positive way, and they reciprocate positive influence from those who are around them. And then those who really do not hold themselves, or they see themselves by negative perception, they tend to behave in such a way, and in return, what is reciprocated for them is this idea of negativity. So what happens is that self-esteem becomes so important during these school years, because as they say, as children, we really want to fit in. We want to be accepted by our peers. And as such, when we come out to them, we start behaving in the same way, the same manner, subhanAllah, that we have seen ourselves. And in sociology, they have this concept of the uh, sea glass reflection view. 
And basically what it is, they say that in the first five years, the way that children formulate ideas about themselves is the same way that we go and we stand in front of a mirror and accordingly we make the adjustment. You know, you fix this, you fix that, you button here and you button there, and so on. So they say that the first five years, children don't really have this, but their mirror, their glass, really becomes their parents. And now the way that they formulate opinions about themselves is really all about what do we reflect back to them. How do we speak back to them? What are the things that we tell our children and how do we react to how and what they do and what kind of names do we call them or not, or not call them? You know, they speak about the example of, you know what, here is the father who is busy doing things, they are reading and then the child comes to them and say, dad, dad, and dad does not really pay attention. They say we may just view it as dad was innocently busy, did not hear, was not paying attention. But the idea is, they say that children start questioning themselves at that point. Do I really exist? Am I really important? I came and I begged and I got nothing in response. Or as they say, when a tree falls in the forest and there was no one there, did the tree really make a noise? Who heard it? Similarly, they say, subhanAllah, you know what happens? is what kind of reflection are we giving back to our children? Allah subhanAllah, you have got to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, the stories are popular. And sometimes we hear them, but we really need to take them in. You know what? This really means a lot. Imagine that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is giving the khutbah. Just imagine this, subhanAllah. And his grandchildren walk in. And what does Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He leaves the people. He leaves his place on the pulpit. He goes down and he picks them up and he holds them and he comes back and he finished his sermon and his khutbah just holding his children there. Meaning that you really are very important. Even in the midst of the khutbah, you remain to be the priority for me. People would speak about the Prophet wasallam, and he would be sitting with an important delegation. And these are like elites of tribes that are very important and the Muslims need them most. And then all of a sudden they say Fatima, his daughter, would walk in. The Prophet وسلم, in the midst of these conversations, he وسلم, would get up, walks towards his daughter, kisses her on the forehead, and then he makes her sit next to him. Can you imagine how our children would feel about themselves when they see how much attention we pay to them? And subhanAllah, how much validation we give them, say that subhanAllah, that just becomes unbelievable. And what happens eventually, they say that, when our children are not validated at home, they look for validation somewhere else. Wallahi, brothers and sisters. SubhanAllah, not only our children, when we ourselves as adults, when we do not feel validated at home, we look for and we appreciate validation that comes from outside. So as we are embarking on this, please let us remember that we need and we are the main pillars of really formulating that initial self-esteem of our children. And subhanAllah, the way that we do this is really by becoming their cheerleaders, validating them, you know, appreciating their natural abilities. Please do not misunderestimate the importance of you attending their plays, their games, their spelling bees, you know, the different sports that they have. Even when our children tell you, you know, it's not a biggie, no, it really is a biggie. Because subhanAllah, we are there to validate and to acknowledge. Self-esteem is going to be such a big, huge deal for our children when they go to school. Because now the way that they are going to carry themselves is really dependent on how do they see themselves. And the way that they're going to see themselves is going to determine how other people are going to see them. But all of this comes as to what did we reflect back on them when they were at home with us. Second one is social pressure. There is a tremendous amount of social pressure on our kids when they go to school. Allah, you know, one way of really, as parents, helping our children is to appreciate the challenge that they go through. 
especially when it comes to social pressure. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to just dismiss it. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about what people say about you. Disregard them, dismiss that. And in our tendency to simplify and quickly dismiss, our children would look back at us and say, you really don't understand what is going on. You don't understand how crazy it is out there. Social pressure is so unbelievably huge that the way that people talk, the way that people dress, the way that people, you know, what is determined whom they hang around with, is really determined by how much they give in and how much social pressure there is on these kids. Wallahi, it is an unbelievable amount of societal pressure that takes place. Subhanallah, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Subhanallah, he taught us to seek refuge in Allah from this. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ Oh Allah, he said, I seek refuge in you from being overwhelmed with debts or being overwhelmed with societal pressure. Because sometimes society has got so much of an impact on us and subhanAllah, the younger we are, especially around high school, society can do so many damage to our children. But subhanAllah, again, the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, in the midst of us wanting to fit in, the Prophet, peace upon him, taught it and he taught it so beautifully. La yakun ahadukum imma. Said that one of you should not blindly follow other people. In ahsan al nasu ahsan. When people do good, when people do good, he does good along with them. Wa in asa'u asa'. And when they do evil, he does evil. Walakim. However, said li watin kullu minkum nafsi. Said let every one of you think for themselves. In ahsan al nasu ahsan. When people do good, he goes along and he does good with them. And then when people make wrong choices, poor choices, you know what? I don't want to be part of this. Children who have positive self-esteem, they actually have got more potential to say no when they are faced with these types of societal pressure. The idea of making it okay for our children to say no and making it okay for them to speak their mind because again one day you would want them to speak up and not be afraid and say, I really don't want to do this. I do not want to be part of this. The Prophet wasallam again would teach us and these are some of the lessons that we want our youngsters to learn as well. Societal pressure is usually increases by the kind of company that we hold around us. Listen to what the Prophet taught. مثل الجليس الصالح والجليس السوء He said the parable of a good company and the parable of evil or not so good bad company. So the Prophet gives this simile. He said كحامل المسكي ونافخ الكير he said, this is like the one who sells perfume and cologne and the blacksmith who is constantly working with fire and sparks are flying all over the place. And subhanAllah, he said that you go there to Hamil al Mist, to the one who's selling the perfume and the cologne, he said that it's a win-win situation. You go there, the place smells good. Or they give you a free sample, or you buy something, he said just the mere presence of being there said that it's a win-win situation. You know, I'm not sure if uh, uh, some of us are willing to confess to this. But when you go to the mall, your favorite place is, you know what, the free samples. You just go there because it's free. And you go in pretending that you're spraying the paper, but you're really spraying it on your jacket. In the hopes that, you know what, when you go somewhere else, it will remain on you and people are going to smell it, but you got it for free. It's subhanAllah, it's a nice feeling. You just get this and somebody has it there for you for free. The Prophet ﷺ said, such is the keeping of good company. It's always a win-win situation. So to the youngsters who are here, when you go back to school, make sure that you are selective in whom you choose to hang around. Wallahi. Make sure that you pick good friends. Good friends. Friends with integrity, good ethics, and good standards. These are the people that you want to hang around with. Because on the other hand, the Prophet said, and then there is Nafiq al Kir, the one who is just really blowing and the one who is just really making fire all the time. Number one, it smells bad, you know, burning iron and metal. It doesn't smell good. And chances are, if a spark flies out, it will come and land on you, and that heat is going to burn your shirt, and the damage is going to be permanent. So the Prophet said, keep away. And we really need to teach our children to keep away. 
not to scare you as parents. Allah, not the idea. But the challenges out there are tremendous. Give you an example. As we speak, amongst high schoolers, senior high schoolers, seniors in high school smoke more marijuana than they smoke regular cigarettes. It's unbelievable, subhanAllah. They smoke more marijuana than they smoke cigarettes. The average age when people are exposed to smoking marijuana is what? The eighth grade. Some of us think that, you know what, it's later years in high school. No, they're saying that nowadays they are seeing kids who are beginning to smoke in their eighth grade. That is too young for our children to be exposed to this. So as we speak that, you know what, school is starting, you really want to have a good talk with your children. Baba, I'm really excited for you. Honey, I'm excited that you're going to school and I hope and I know that you will do well. Well, here is the plan for you succeeding academically. And here is the plan for also making sure that you succeed socially as well. We need to address these ills and we need to address these issues that we want our children to, to avoid. And then there is a stress. You know, stress is not just for us who are working. Man, these kids have got a lot of stress. You know, the doing of the homework, the getting good grades. Nowadays, the school that you go to in the future, the university that you apply to is going to be determined by how well your grades were. And some of these kids in school are so unbelievably smart, I can't keep up with them. Their GPA is 4.8. How do you get 4.8? The maximum possibility is 4.0. Oh, you don't understand. They take AP classes. They are in honor classes. I can't compete with that. And even if I were to do this, it would just be such a, humong a humongous amount of stress that is placed on me as a child to compete with kids who are this smart. Appreciate the stress that your kids go through. Because subhanAllah, even saying no is a stressful. And it's not just about saying no and they just walked away. A great deal of stress was left behind. And just too quickly, the last two is like we said, you know, the idea of substance abuse. Remember when we speak about substance, we're talking about legal and illegal drugs. They're talking about nowadays kids being addicted to pain medication. You know, kids taking these Xanax and making all kinds of formulas on their own, all legal, over-the-counter drugs, and just really making it into something that makes them high. You really need to address these issues. You know, my kids are so innocent, they don't know anything about this. They will soon find out. They will soon find out. And if we do not take the initiative in protecting them, brothers and sisters, I'm afraid that the consequences are going to be great. And then the last one is sex. Pressure to have sex, brothers and sisters. Sex is hard to avoid. Wallahi, sex is hard to avoid. It is all over the place. It is all around us. It doesn't matter where you go, there is usually some sexual images around us. You may not approve of it, but we cannot escape it. We cannot escape it. We don't like it, but we cannot escape it. And again, again there is so much pressure for our youngsters to be involved in something like this. And again, these are the issues that we really need to be talking to our children about. And we do so lovingly, <coughs> gently, respecting them, encouraging that they explore and discover themselves, but we all want it to be, inshallah, managed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our families and our children. <laughs> Please, inshallah, move forward to make room for those who are coming. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-mustafa wa ala man bi athari uqtafa This khutbah was really a struggle because a person is speaking I was torn do we speak about this topic that really directly impacts us and then the other issue is that one cannot really overlook the heroic actions of the people of Gaza as you know for 51 days the people of Gaza were bombarded and the people of Gaza were violated. The children of Gaza were killed. The buildings of Gaza were wrongly demolished by the Zionist thugs. And that's what we were talking about most of you know, the past few weeks, and rightly so. And even though the conflict is over, one cannot help 
but really look into the people of Gaza and say, man, you did well. You really did well. You stood your ground. And we are so happy that, you know what, there is ceasefire at this point in Gaza. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people of Gaza and bless them with more peace, Ya Rabbi al But, you know, this is the example of, you know, refusing to be bullied. Wallahi, it's so beautiful. Refusing to be bullied. You've got your F-16s, your M-16s, you've got your Uzis, you've got this and you've got that. But you know what? We really did not give in. And when you see something like this, you cannot but help to appreciate what these people have done. So for those who have passed away in Gaza, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their souls, Ya Rabbul Alameen. For those who have been injured, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them speedy recovery, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And for those who have lost their loved ones, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them lots and lots of patience, Ya Akram al Rahmeen, Ya Allah. Speaking of which, insha'Allah, also locally, we do have some sad news on your behalf. We would like to um, share our condolences with Brother Muhannad, who is one of our board members here. His brother, Bassam Malas, passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Inshallah, if you do like to give your condolences to the family, it will take place here on Tuesday between 7 and 9 p.m. Also, another former uh, board member, our brother Mukhtar Shawki, you remember him, Abu Tariq, had a heart surgery last <coughs> Wednesday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a speedy recovery, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and to all those who are not feeling well. Also, another issue of concern that has been brought to our, um, to our attention here <coughs> is that the city of Mission Viejo has decided to open a probation office here. And the probation office is not going to be far away from Mamur Masjid. It's about half a mile away from where we are. And even though we appreciate, you know, probation offices and the way that I try to uh, help those who are not really doing well and giving them second chances, but it really concerns us that there will be a probation office so close to at least four or five schools just on this Madero Street. There is a school here. There are two schools in our Masjid. There are three schools down the street. And that will just be too close of a proximity, people coming in to this probation <coughs> office. That may include sex offenders, it may include drug offenders, and we want the best for these people, but we're not sure that we want them to be so close to our schools in this area. So the city is holding a public meeting that will be taking place, inshallah, on Monday, September 8th, between 6 and 9 p.m., actually two of them, um, Tuesday, September 2nd, between 6 and 9 p.m., and Monday, September 8th, at 6.30. They want people to come and voice their opinion, They're keeping in mind that the city councils are also themselves object to this, uh, to this place. So please, inshallah, if you deem this to be important, please do come to these meetings. Also, inshallah, our weekend school will be opening soon, so please do check out the orientation, as well as our Pillars Academy full-time school and the weekend as well. اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم فرج همنا وهم المهمومين ونفس كربنا وكرب المقروبين اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وفك أسرانا وعاف مبتلانا واختم بالباقيات الصالحات آجالنا اللهم يا رب احفظ أولادنا اللهم يا رب احفظ أولادنا اللهم يا رب اصرفهم عن السوء واصرف السوء عنهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين uh, Just a quick connection, uh, correction I did make mention that it is the city who decides rather it is the county that decides but it is in the city of Mission Vivo so please do take note of that insha'Allah هذا الله أعلم صلى الله على نبينا محمد وآله